A big fan. In the 80s and 90s, the war between the likes of Nintendo and Sega was brutal. If it wasn't Nintendo threatening to pull its products from stores that stocked rival products, then it was Sega mocking Nintendo with advertisements like What Nintendo? Now, no matter what you think of those stories, it's nothing compared to the story one Japanese game developer found themselves in when their sister was kidnapped by the Yakuza and allegedly at the behest of a gaming company. So what happened? Why? And who did it? Let's find out. The video game industry must be an absolutely lovely industry to be part of, right? No one sues anyone, everyone treats everybody else with respect, and you never see companies acting in morally questionable ways. Still, despite all the stories we often hear, not much beats the story of a game developer whose younger sister was kidnapped, and all because they were going to be working with Nintendo. Yes, you heard that right. That's the claim from one game developer who, understandably, requested anonymity. It all comes from an interview in the Untold History of Japanese Game Developers Volume 2, which is well worth a read by the way. Going by the alias Hideo Nanashi, in which Nanashi means nameless or anonymous, the interview starts off exchanging stories about past experiences with the likes of Sega and unfinished and unreleased games, before Nanashi makes the shocking claim my younger sister was kidnapped, blank, hired some gangsters to do it. Now why would any video game company want to do something like that? They did it to stop me cooperating with Nintendo. The nature of the cooperation between Nanashi and Nintendo isn't clear or fully stated, but it is suggested in the book that it had something to do with testifying. Suddenly this advert of Nintendo's Mario being kidnapped by Sega and Sony doesn't seem so far-fetched. <laughs> What are you guys doing with Mario? <laughs> no! Leave Mario out of this. <laughs> now I know what you're probably thinking. Come on, this stuff doesn't happen. Well, you'd like to think so, wouldn't you? But here's an interesting excerpt from the Red Bull documentary on video game music. <laughs> Pretty shocking, right? And that came from Junko Azawa, a considerably famous Japanese composer and sound designer for Namco. But why would the Yakuza be involved? Well, you'd be surprised. It's been suggested that the Yakuza has had a considerable link to the video game industry in Japan over the years. Many have mentioned connections between the Yakuza and Nintendo in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Plus, there's also infamous stories of Nintendo shipping the Super Famicom to retailers in Japan in the middle of the night, due to the threat of the Yakuza hijacking shipments. Why would the Yakuza do that? Sega! Well, that's what many people speculate. It's also widely speculated that arcades in Japan function with the help of the Yakuza, and Anashi mentions that the arcades would have been unable to survive without the help of the Yakuza. The arcades have mostly disappeared now, but in the old days, sometimes people would come in and try to open up the cabinets to check out the internals, or maybe just steal the coins from the day's profits. But if Yakuza were running the arcade, some of the employees would catch you and beat you up. It's not a good thing, but if that never happened, how would you prevent theft and piracy? Because of the forces involved in the industry, you can't reject the idea of taking action like that. If stuff like that had never happened, the game industry wouldn't have developed as much as it did. So it's difficult. It shouldn't happen, but it does. So if the accuser have your sister, what do you do? You go to the police, right? Well, Nanashi didn't. They're a big company, so if you try to fight them with ordinary methods, they'll work with the police and get the legal system to come after you. They might even pay off a politician, like a member of the national diet. Who knows what they're capable of? So what did Nanashi do? Well, they wanted to outsmart the perpetrator, concerned that if they tried to take their sister back by force, they'd just do it again. So they wanted to outthink them and came up with this plan. Step 1. Buy one of the company's arcade cabinets from a distributor. Step 2. Get a truck-mounted crane. 
Step three, smash the arcade cabinet outside the front of the company's main office in the middle of the night. And that's exactly what happened. Well, sorta. Nanashi got one of their assistants to carry out the plans as they didn't have a driver's license. I just smashed it in front of their main office in the middle of the night. It was easy. The blank headquarters are in blank now, but back then they were near blank airport. Their office building was right in front of a major street in a commercial district without any residential homes. Yes, although I didn't dump it myself, I had someone else do it because I don't have a driver's license. I had him just drop the machine and dump it. So I don't know how damaged it was, but I assume it smashed apart. And then I sent blank a letter. So who did it? Well, it's important to state here that these claims are made by the anonymous Nanashi and so any discussion on who is behind this is purely speculation based on what they've themselves said. That being said, it hasn't stopped people speculating on a number of potential candidates, including Konami, Sony and Sega. One of the interesting comments made by Nanashi was that the company in question was known for using isolation rooms. I don't know how much you know about Blank, but are you aware of the quarantine room problem from around the year 2000? They would put employees alone in a room and give them absolutely nothing to do in order to make them resign. Blank did that and former Blank employees sued them and won. That's the kind of thing Blank did back then. They didn't just put people behind a partition or something, they sent them away to a completely different floor of the building. Blank didn't just lose a lawsuit over this, they completely tarnished their image. Nobody wanted to buy games from a company like that. It became a major social issue. It's been rumoured that Konami have engaged in such practices, which have been mentioned by none other than Jeff Keighley, who claimed that Konami locked Kojima in an isolation room for months. And in 2013, Sony had also been accused of using isolation rooms. However, it seems as though Nanashi is referring to a story in which Sega were being sued by employees due to being put in these isolation rooms, as this was reported by IGN and other websites in April 2001, which fits around the time as claimed by Nanashi. Nanashi also claimed the Japanese press didn't publicise this legal claim by Sega employees as they were concerned that the company in question would pull their advertising. Now the next evidence I'm going to present to you is tenuous at best, but throughout the untold history of Japanese game developers volume 2, the redacted names and identifiable information is removed with a black border like I've demonstrated here. However, if you buy the electronic version of the book and highlight the text, then you will notice that X's appear. Now, if it was the same number of X's each time something was redacted, I wouldn't take much notice. But let's go back to one of the early claims from Nanashi in the story. My younger sister was kidnapped. Blank hired some gangsters to do it. Now, whenever the name of the company is used, then four X's are used each time. Further to this, Nanashi at one point makes the following statement. The parent company of Blank was changed in early Blank. They do not know the Blank's history of Blank. The former president of Blank was a man named Blank San. So, if we replace the X's to Sega, then what about the former president of Sega? Well, it would need to be someone whose name fits eight characters. And what do you know? That would be the former Sega president, Nakayama. And the surname fits. If this is accurate, then Nanashi goes on to make some pretty bold claims about his and other member of the board of directors involvement with the underworld. Old members of the board, they would have short fingers, like the accuser who get their fingers cut off. There were really people like that. Nanashi also comments, originally, President Blank was the president of a company named Blank Blank. But back then, people involved in overseas imports and exports almost always had shady connections. Well, what company did Nakayama run before working with Sega? None other than Esco Trading, which also fits the appropriate number of characters. Nanashi also mentioned about the company being close to an airport at one time. Well, Sega were near an airport. The Blank headquarters are in Blank now, but back then they were near Blank Airport. Their office building was right in front of a major street in a commercial district without any residential homes. This is interesting because it appears as though Sega's head office at the time of the book was in Shinagawa, and that fits with the nine characters identified. But what about the airport? Well, a simple Google search will show that Sega's corporate headquarters have been located on the same patch of land for over 50 years, 
a short distance away from Haneda Airport. And yes, that fits the six characters also. Understandably, the whole ordeal must have been awful for Nanashi, who would have been understandably legitimately scared. Worried they'd lose their livelihood, or at worst, lose their life. I guess you could say Sega really does what Nintendo don't. Obviously, that was a different time, but when you consider recent reports of real-life Yakuza being arrested for a shooting at the home of the Sega Sammy chairman, who wouldn't be nervous? It's almost like some sort of meta-advertising for the next Yakuza game. It's crazy to think that a story like this could happen, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this story. Who do you think was behind it all? Do you think that it was actually some mustachioed, egg-shaped crime lord? Or do you have another idea? Please let me know your thoughts on this story by commenting below. At least it will be something to read whilst I wait for the Yakuza to come after me. Boy, are we in big trouble. <laughs> we just can't beat you guys. Yeah, well, as much as we'd love to stick around here and keep playing with you guys, we gotta go. Hello, you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell to be first to be notified of future videos. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon to see videos even sooner. But thanks again for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time.